Well, hello everyone and welcome to the show. We are ready for a great one again, of course, for you guys. Uh, we've got some really, really good big topics. No surprise there either. We've got my buddy there, Clay. Clay, say hi to everyone. Hey everybody, back for another week. Uh, we got Elsa again, two in a row. <laughs> Yes, we're, we're, yes, and tomorrow I go to Florida again. <laughs> right, just so everybody knows, yeah. we're a little bit out of sync because she's going to see Grandbaby again. We're recording on a Monday instead of a Tuesday, so if the news seems a little off as we're talking, that's why. But yes, I'm glad you told them. Glad you told them that. To because started. yes, yes. All right, right after this, we will. Hey, okay, so we are jumping right in like we did last week. We did the same thing last week because we have like five. Some a lot of times we do like what, like three? Three or and four. We yeah. give them, yeah, three or four, and we give them like a, a really good chunk of time because they usually need them. But um, there's just so much stuff. There's so much stuff. So uh, right off the bat, we're talking about uh, RFK gaining momentum. How about that? That's a uh, that's um not a surprise. It's not no. a surprise, right? I mean, it's no surprise at all. So we want to look at like the big implications of that and um it, it's pretty interesting maybe not surprising for a lot of people but the dems are they're freaking out they're freaking out it's kind of funny <laughs> kind well, we, of funny right yeah i mean this started a couple of months ago you and i you know kind of figured out that this was going to be a, an issue when president biden refused secret service protection for rfk remember when that happened we we're yes. like, OK, well, that's that's an issue there. Um, and yes. we've kind of kept an eye on him. You know, he's been mm -hmm. kind of simmering in the background and waiting for, you know, the Republican Party to shrink its field down to what we inevitably knew was going to happen, which is, you know, mm -hmm. President Trump is the candidate. And right. so here we sit. Right. We've got President Biden. We've got President mm -hmm. Trump um, and we've got RFK Jr. And, you know, he's running as an independent. And so the big news is he announced his vice presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. And, you know. What do we know about her? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, not not a ton. She's a, a Silicon Valley ph philanthropist, uh, Nicole Shanahan. Uh, she's what thirty eight years old, very young, and um, she has been, you know, out of the political arena. This is not her lane. Uh, she's obviously, you know, very on board with uh, Kennedy's. Um, um, ideas and and sentiments you know i mean they're they're in sync yeah i mean she's she's interesting she's interesting um she's, I, there she's, was some there was some big criticism of her though rich. she's, yeah, she's loaded her, her husband her ex-husband was one of the founders of google yes so in the right. divorce settlement she as we would all assume got a ton of money yes now you know, Supreme Court ruled in, uh, I think it was in the 70s, like 76, maybe, that your personal, and this is what President Trump did too, your mm -hmm. personal finance as a candidate, you can spend it however you want. So there's no limitation on you spending your own money to run for office. Right. There's no campaign rules against it. It actually falls under free speech, which I thought was amazing. Um, mm -hmm. That it fell under the First Amendment. But as she runs for office now, RFK as an independent. I mean, obviously, you know, President Trump, and we're gonna, we're going to talk about fundraising in a minute. But um, you mm -hmm. know, President Trump and President Biden have the the coffers, the war chests of the parties to rely upon, which right. you know RFK doesn't. But what he does have mm -hmm. is a vice presidential candidate with a crap ton of money that they now girls have got banked. Yeah, She's got, she already paid four million dollars. She financed four million dollars for his Super Bowl commercial which obviously I think is where the attention came and what put her on his radar to potentially become his vice and now right. is his vice presidential candidate. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and they are, and the Dems are, are, like we said, they're going, they're going bonkers. They're going bat shit crazy over it. Uh, they've got super PACs, more than one devoted to crushing third party candidates. Uh, let's see what else. Democrat Na National Committee, mobile billboards. They troll Kennedy at, at events and uh, party donors are funding legal efforts to try and keep them off the ballot. So they're pulling out all the stops. They're yep. shaking in their shoes. Um, 
And that's interesting. And he's interesting, of course, in many, many ways. But one of them is that he has, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, he has actually said favorable things about Trump. He's he's not really, he's not anti-Trump. He's definitely, he's calling, um, you know, Biden the biggest threat to um, this country. So he's, you know, he's aiming his guns that way. And he's not aiming them towards Trump, which leads me to um, question. And now, mind you, Clay and, and our viewers, I'm not a political analyst. I don't know a lot of these things. So don't come for me when I ask this question. <laughs> Is there a possibility that when it came down to it, that Trump could ever pick Kennedy as a running mate? Can that happen in the sphere of anything? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't see why not. Um, right. I, I think, you know, declaring is there may be some rules about him declaring as an independent, running as an independent if he drops mm -hmm. out of the race. And then, um, you know, I I. I honestly don't see him switching parties right? Uh, because he is Agreed. a Democrat at heart. I mean, he is a Kennedy. Um, he's actually right. one of his big criticisms of President Biden is that, you know, his family, the famous Kennedys, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're not talking about drunk Teddy, right? We're talking, no. we're talking about, <laughs> you know, Jack, Jack and Bobby would yeah. be ashamed of what the, the Democratic Party has become. And especially yeah. what President Biden is doing in the White House. He's not shy about saying that. I, right. I don't as you know, I think your your point of, you know, he's favorable, not necessarily favorable, but he's he doesn't slam Trump. He doesn't slander him. He doesn't go after him like the rest mm -hmm. of the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. But I don't see him switching parties to be a VP candidate for Trump. I, I don't okay. see that happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I could see where it would be desirable, though, for, oh, for sure. the people. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like that could appease a lot of anti-Trumpers um, and could appeal. I mean, because he's got a big uh, what he's pulling away from Biden is um, and I think you mentioned this last week. He's pulling away young black voters. Right. Uh, young young voters in general, I believe, but specifically voters of color. So yeah. um that that's a big threat. That's a big threat. Yeah. And it's um, so when he announced um, Shanahan as his vice presidential candidate, mm -hmm. like you said, the Dems went into full, full freak out mode. Right. There were right. memos sent. There were like, you know, because I think they weren't taking him very seriously because mm -hmm. he just wasn't going to be, be able to financially survive. Right. right. I think they we're just kind of like, OK, well, we'll give him till, you know, June at latest and then he'll be gone because he'll shot his wad he won't have any money well mm -hmm. now that you know things have changed so now it's a significant you know emotional event for them to to deal with him because and i had forgotten about this we've talked about ross perot and his effect on the 92 right. election right mm -hmm. he essentially split enough of the republican party to put bill clinton into office right? yes it's arguable yeah. some people will go back and revision his history and say no he didn't he didn't have that much effect blah 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 blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um but he he actually Ross Perot was actually winning in the polls at one point in time. Mm -hmm. Forget that. But anyway, so he you know we've been, we've talked about Ross Perot as a third party candidate having an effect on the election. Right. I had forgotten about this until I was reading. Uh, maybe it was Saturday. Um, I was reading. You know, was it Nader? I think it was Ralph Nader in two thousand oh. mm -hmm. was running, and he's the one who caused his impact caused the recount in Florida between Bush Gore. Oh wow. Right. Wow. So now you've got. And, and so that, of course, lost the election for yeah. that lost Florida and eventually lost the Electoral College votes for Florida for Gore, which lost the election. So mm -hmm. now you've got, you know, the, the Democratic Party is in a little bit of a freak out mode because they know that it's these it's these states. It's the, the battleground states that mm -hmm. are, are going to be the problem, because yeah. if they're that close, you know, the estimate is. Trump's not losing his base to RFK. Right. It's Biden that's losing his base to RFK. Yeah. And yeah. You know, and obviously the proof in that is which one is freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if there's, you know, if you need to, if you need to wonder who's, who's, uh, who's got the most to lose from, from that, from a third party candidate, obviously it's the one who's going nuts. And, and listen, I've seen numbers as high as 60%. Um, of the voting public right now doesn't want either one of them. 
Wow. Right? They don't want. Well, yeah, yeah, they absolutely. They don't want Biden or Trump. Right, it's up to yeah. six. I've seen as high as sixty percent. Right, most of the but most of the polls I've seen are in the like the low fifties. It's still fifty percent. Right, that's a big chunk. It's still a lot of people. So yeah, that, you can't that, disregard that. No. So so what you've got is a viable. Listen, Kennedy's never going to win. He's right. net. He's never going to win. But right. what he is going to do is affect the election, and we've been saying that for a long time. But I mm -hmm. think with this infusion of cash that he just got with his vice president and he was talking about some cool people as vice not cool but he was talking about some interesting people as yes. vice president right aaron Rodgers and jesse mm -hmm. ventura and some other folks and all of a sudden he pulls this lady out of thin air and of course it's yes. because she's got the she's cash. got the money yeah she's got the money honey right yep. <laughs> she's also yeah. anti-vaccine like he is right so that you know there are some you said it when we kind of started there's mm -hmm. some overlap in their views. I don't think she's necessarily hard line. I think she's probably a little further left than he is, which is a little weird, but um, right. Yeah. But there are I, some you know, very strict issues or hard, hard line issues that they're in line with. Yeah. You know, I can't remember for the life of me what it was, but there was something about her and maybe one of our viewers, listeners can chime in here. If they know there was something about her that was uh, intensely off putting that disappointed a lot of RFK junior uh, fans, followers, supporters, whatever you want to call them. Um, there was something about her that was a, a big deal and I, I don't know what it was. So I, I will find it or one of you will find it and put it in the comments for us. Um, but yeah, darn, it makes me so mad when I, I can't remember what it is, but it, either way, uh, it's very interesting. I, I'm just curious, do you think he's gone into this? And I know it's really impossible to get inside somebody else's mind and their mindset, but I'm just curious, do you think like he's come into this also knowing full well he's not going to win he's yeah. just going to do enough to really stir the pot and jolt everything what do you think yeah i i no third party independent candidates ever won um, right so in fact no third party candidate has ever carried a state um, mm. and won in electoral votes so okay. um but he is from that family right mm -hmm. i i do believe and I know that this goes against everything I believe about politicians, but I think deep down inside, there is a touch of altruism in what he's trying to do. I really do believe that he thinks that it's the right thing to do for the country that he, you know, carrying on his family's legacy um, and the name and, and everything it stands for and has stood for in the past. I do believe that in his heart of hearts, he thinks he's doing the right thing. But I also yeah. think he knows, you know, when the room is quiet and the lights are out and he's sitting there by himself, he knows he's not going to win. So right. he's doing what he he's doing what he can, like you said, to affect the election in what he thinks is the best way possible for the country, mm -hmm. which is to keep Biden out of office. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, man, Biden Harris. I mean, is what more can you say about everything except for that? And and really, actually, the icing on the cake of of those two names, it, that imagery, is honestly, it is Biden's bad enough bad enough but the very thought of her <laughs> in that seat should be making everyone ill just yeah. ill and yeah. uh and you don't hear you know there's certainly factions of people who are you know still writing that whole she could be the first black female indian president of the United, you know, doing all of the things. They're always going to have that crowd that that is all they hyper-focus on. They don't care about anything else. They certainly exist, but you don't hear them a lot. You really don't. That is not a big, loud chant that you're hearing. Like you would be hearing if it were Michelle Obama, for example. She is not, she is not the champion that they wanted. Believe me. No. That, no. That is not. <laughs> she becomes the first anything in any of those realms. Mm -hmm. Like, that it will be an embarrassment. And I think even the yeah. people on her side will be like, yeah, boy, we yeah. slid into that one. Yeah. I don't think right. nobody wants that. I, 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 and, I've and never, never seen or heard a single person. that's like, man, I really hope she ends up. As right. a nobody. And, and that is really like when you actually stop for a minute and think about that, you're talking about a party whose whole existence is on identity politics and, you know, racial everything like that is their that's their baby right there and that they can't push this woman forward in good conscience. Not that they actually have good conscience, but in any kind of conscious themselves 
tells you a lot, a lot, a lot. So, yeah. Boy, so Thanks. listen, we're talking about all these guys and um, how they get in their money. We know how our, <laughs> we know how how Junior's getting his money. How about the rest of them? It's very yeah. interesting. So, uh, I mean, we we talked about this uh, a little bit last week, but it became mm -hmm. much more relevant. So, you know, um, President Biden, in, instead of attending the wake and funeral of that slain police officer, decided to go to yeah. a swanky fundraiser shindig in D.C. Mm -hmm. where they pulled out all the stops. They got they they broke out everybody, everybody but Jimmy Carter. Um, yes. I mean, they, you know, Lizzo got, was there. Right. Yeah. Thank God for that. Um, yeah. You know, they got they got President Clinton and president obama right and mm -hmm. president biden you got three presidents in the room at the same time and and yep. you know and i know like president obama and even clinton to this day is still the rock star of the democratic party like 100 would walk past president biden would walk past president obama to get to president clinton to shake his hand right even yeah. now yeah. right it's and they crazy. would certainly walk yeah. past Biden to get to Obama for the same reason. But they right. had all of that star power in one place, right? Mm -hmm. And they pulled $25 million in fundraising in one night, right? That's one a night. big yeah. deal. That's a big deal. Yeah. $25 million. That's a very big deal. Right? And, and yes. you know, all of this stuff, you know, the, the president, the incumbent, whoever it is, always has a mm -hmm. bit of an advantage when it comes yeah. to running for reelection because their staff is their staff, right? They don't really right. have to pay for their staff because their staff, most of their staff is getting their White House staff. So they're already mm -hmm. getting paid for. So that doesn't come out of their, you know, election, re-election fund. So there's a little right. bit there. But like President Trump in this case, you mm -hmm. know, or anybody else who's running, who's not the incumbent, they've got to pay for travel. They got to pay for staff. They got to mm -hmm. pay. And really the biggest thing that they've got to pay for is advertising. Mm, advertising right. dollars are big they're huge right like we said in the in the last segment rfk juniors you know um vp candidate shanahan paid four million dollars for him for mm -hmm. super bowl commercial four million dollars yep. right? four million dollars advertising is where it's at so yep. that's where most of that 25 million is going to go mm -hmm. right and that's what they were yeah. looking for thank god they yep. got Lizzo. right yeah. Right. Yeah. So let me say, uh, let me say two things. And one of them, I'm going to ask my Christian friends to cover your ears for just a moment, <laughs> just a moment. And uh, let me just say about that, um, that fundraising event and uh, President Jackass going to that instead of the, not that they'd want him there, but the funeral for, uh, for officer Jonathan Diller. Um, what a piece of shit. You guys can uncover your ears now. What a, Actually, cover him again. What a piece of shit. That's all I can say. And uh, good on Trump for being there, for going. And uh, I love that they booted that governor of New York right the hell out. Said, get out of here. Didn't even get in the door. Couldn't Stopped even before get she got in. in the door. Yep. Just, it was a flat out, you're gone. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, I know it's a little hard to tell my feelings on that subject, but. Um, Cop's wife. To... <laughs> You've never been shy. Cop's wife. That's it's who you are. You shouldn't be, you know, you shouldn't yeah. sugarcoat any of that. That nope. is a, a that that opinion, your position is well deserved and well earned. So good yep. for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh that got me so fired up. I don't even remember what my second point was. I don't even <laughs> have the slightest clue what the other thing I was gonna say. Was. <laughs> well, oh. I, I'll I'll say it. So they got outdone, right? Thank President you. Trump yes. this past week down in Florida, hanging mm -hmm. out. Being President Trump, showed up at a fundraiser by him and him and Melania. Yep, just them. Didn't bring out any other superstars. None of that stuff. Nope. Fifty point five million dollars. He How doubled about them. that. Doubled them. Yeah. That is, How about that, that? Astonishing. Yes. So there. Uh, so what's their what's their difference? I, I do have it. Let's see. So Biden's campaign says it entered February with one hundred thirty million cash on hand across its affiliated committees. Uh, let's see, do, 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 and the Trump campaign, uh, Republican National Committee, and the Political Action Committee supporting him had 65 million cash on hand combined to start February. So obviously I'm pretty sure that's not including this latest oh, uh, no. fundraising. So yeah. Um, so yeah, so how about them apples? <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure, were they behind? 
Okay. Right. But you know, and I know that president, you know, well, first of all, the Republican party up until just a few weeks ago was very, very divided in where the mm -hmm. donations were going. They were going to DeSantis. They were going, you know what I mean? They were going to all the different sure. candidates. So you had money, you know, split up and, and, you know, diversified across, across those, those candidates. Well, now we're down to one, right? Mm -hmm. So now you've got a funnel um, right. as opposed to a colander, <laughs> you know, yeah, right, right. money going in every direction. Yeah. Um, so th now the money's going to roll straight towards Trump through the Republican National Party uh, mm -hmm. or National Committee. And um, and so the, the numbers will start to even out. But just the simple fact that they literally brought out every big gun they had. And he just strolled out there, the big man with the orange hair and his beautiful wife. Put his, little, put his thumbs up, yeah, did his, his little, little dance. dance. <laughs> his little dance. <laughs> love his little dance. I love it. I and, can't help it. And he doubled them up. He yeah. doubled them up. I mean, yes. it, it's... That it's one, it's a record setting, you know, performance. Nobody's done that mm -hmm. at a single event before. But I think, you know, and the reason that we strung these last two topics together is these are huge indicators that they're that the Democratic Party is falling behind in this election. Right. They're in trouble. They're, they're panicking about an independent candidate, the impact yes. of an independent candidate. Right. Panicking. Mm -hmm. And now they've got some they've got some fundraising issues that are staring them right in the face. Right. Um, so, you know, what do you, you know, you said that you're not a political pundit, but you're a pretty smart lady. I mean, what do, what are you seeing in the near future? Um, what kind of moves are they going to have to make to, to try and gain some ground back? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you know, all of their fight is dirty. You know, every, everything that they do is dirty and underhanded and slimy, honestly. I mean, so you're talking about um, throwing every, you know, how many, what was the number of lawsuits thrown at oh, Trump? What we, I mean, you know, know some absurd around, number. Like yeah. And we're talking about, you know, I think there's some criminal ones thrown in there, but generally we're talking about civil suits. Civil suits always are about money payouts. So here we go. You know, here we are with that. That's been a, 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 a constant that they're trying to, you know, bankrupt him. So he has no money. What are they freaking out with RFK or what were they not freaking about? Freaking out about? Eh, whatever. He doesn't have any money. He'll burn himself out. Oh, uh oh, he's got money. You know, now we've got to really pull out all the stops and go crazy. So, you know, what are they going to do next? I, I don't know. I really don't know, but I, I know it will be dirty. <laughs> that that I would almost guarantee to you that, you know, they they will they will do underhanded things. What is it gonna be? I don't know. Somebody smarter than me is, is gonna have to tell us in the in the comments and, and maybe you've got some ideas, but that's the only thing I can come up with because what could they do at this point? I mean, they're losing ground everywhere. Yeah, I, I think it's a it's they're not there yet, but they're getting very close to like the big move. Like mm -hmm. I, I know that, that, you know, the, the strategy has revolved around a couple of things and you touched on this earlier, right? Vice president Harris is, she's a boat anchor, right? Mm -hmm. She's, she is part of the problem. In fact, she's a pretty significant part of the problem. Mm -hmm. The other part of the problem is president Biden's age, right? And how long are they going to ride both of those? You know, I, I mean, we're talking like these are, mafia concrete loafers right i mean mm -hmm. those two things alone are, <laughs> right. are dragging them down and mm -hmm. i think you know there's going to come a point and i'm sure they have a decision point set up and they know when it's going to be but at one point they're going to have to act on one of those two things mm -hmm. um, and the question is what and i and i think they have to cut her away they can't yeah. continue to move forward with this campaign the way it is with her as the vice presidential candidate it's mm -hmm. it's death like it is the end yeah and i'm not you saying, that, cut, I'm not saying that cutting her is going to fix it right but keeping her is certainly making things worse mm -hmm. so they, they're going to have to make a major move yeah uh, of some kind to to turn this thing around because it's it's on a downward spiral who at this point could they they position to to fit that i mean we, we've I think, you know, we've already couple. seen, yeah, I mean, we've already seen the attempts, you know, the, the potential floating of Newsom, which seems to have completely just vanished um, from what I can tell. Uh, obviously, Michelle Obama, that seems to be completely out of the, the realm of possibilities. Um, who is there? Do they have anybody else as, as 
people floating around as front runners potentials? I'd have to dig, but I would bet my guess would be they would go with youth. Mm. They would they would yeah. go with a, a youthful candidate knowing that the president is not, right? Mm -hmm. So they gotta right. counterbalance him. And yeah. it's not gonna I, I don't think like they're not gonna go with a younger <laughs> a younger version of Kamala Harris. Like right. that's not working. So right. it's probably gonna be a young male, mm -hmm. right? Would be my guess. Um, I don't know who that would be. I'd have to do some right. research, but that it, it, you mean, my guess you mean it, it wouldn't be AOC? I mean, she seems really perfect. <laughs> she's, she's just as dumb or dumber than Harris. Like, yeah. there's no, she's just an idiot. Um, you know what ticket I'd love to see them run? I'd love to see a, a AOC Fetterman ticket. I think that would be just a a really fun show to watch. <laughs> Listen, we're, we're going to talk, talk about him. Actually, we can talk about him now. Right? We got to talk I mean, about we, him. We've already hit this, you know, the, the, the Democratic Party's in 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 dire straits. And, and yes. Fetterman, again, and listen, I was the biggest, you know this, I was the biggest Fetterman hater when he got elected. I could not believe that that happened yep. um, because he was such an idiot as a lieutenant governor here in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yep. and, and then the strokes and the shorts and all that crap. Oh. But what did he say this week? Squatters, Man's gone rogue again. He's gone rogue. He's gone against the party again. Squatters yes. have no rights. Yes. Right? Yeah. He said this is there's no nobody with any common sense can believe that this is okay. And he's and he's yeah. right. He, yeah. He's he's 100 percent right. He's just speaking facts. He's just he's just yeah. and like he's been doing this quite a bit lately. So this is just a, another another round of John Fetterman saying intelligent things. Like that last well, stroke must have done something good. Must have something. jolted something right in his brain. Now, before we get deep into this squatter's rights, because we are going to talk about this. The one yep. thing that I will continue to say about Fetterman is he says mm -hmm. a lot of things out loud that people love to hear. He votes how the party tells him to vote. Yes, yes. And so. you have said in th that in the past. And I, and I think that is really, really important to remember because we, meaning collectively people, um, tend to just look at the surface those kind of statements and go, he's okay. And, you know, you got to look a little bit deeper and, and, I, and I'm glad you pointed that out because that is an important thing to remember. Yeah. yeah. So this, this thing with the squatters is it's a, it's a nationwide problem, mm -hmm. right? It, this is happening everywhere. Um, coast to coast, right. And, and yeah. all over the place and, and really probably people are aware, but you know, the bottom line is, is these are the results of a couple of things, right? Squatters are occupying houses, while people are away, mm -hmm. right? They're out of town. They're on vacation. Um, a house is being bought or sold. Yeah. Right. You know, it's on right. the market. Squatter moves in. Mm -hmm. um, you've got people who have multiple houses, right? Maybe a, yep. maybe a winter house in Florida and a summer house up north or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that, and you know, the squatters figure out that it's not occupied and it's not being watched and they break in and they move in. Um, yep. and, and it, it had, so those are kind of the norms, but what's happening with this is in a lot of these States, they have established laws where if you can provide pr proof of residency, mm -hmm. right, which squatter breaks into a house, they need power. They go to the power company, the power company doesn't care. They're not checking leases. They're not, you right. know, and even if they can check a lease, they'll forge, they'll forge a lease anyway, but mm -hmm. leases or property taxes or any of that stuff. And they just say, Hey, I, I need somebody to come pick up my trash. Where are you mm -hmm. at? I'm at, uh, you know, you know, one, two, three around the corner street, whatever it is. And, <laughs> and the trash company goes, okay. And, right. you know, and they bill them. And so they get trash pickup. Well, now they've got mm -hmm. proof that they live there, their name mm -hmm. on a bill at that address. And now they've, now they're anchored. And so people are coming home or coming back or, you know, going to their other house or whatever it is. And they're finding people have moved in like whole families or multiple families or like a right. bunch of homeless people have moved in and taken over their home. Mm -hmm. And they have, in a lot of these cases, no legal recourse. Mm. None. It I is, mean, how? I, I just cannot fit my brain around how something like that could possibly happen and be allowed and and for nobody to go oops <laughs> think we got to fix this this is a little bit of a problem there's a little bit of a, a law language mistake we've made here let's hurry up and fix that 
And obviously that's not the case because here we are with with instance after instance uh, of these things happen. And there's a, uh, just for one of the many, 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 many examples, a, a New York City owner of a $1.1 million house was torched by squatters. Yeah, and, I saw uh, that. Did you see that? I'm like, are you kidding me? And this poor guy, and he's, you know, I mean, it's just insane. Like, there's nothing he could do. Nothing he could do. And he said somewhere in the article, and I didn't, I, I didn't save that part of it, but I know somewhere in the article, he said, you know, he couldn't even, he was afraid to actually go there because there was multiple, multiple people living there and uh, squatting there. And he said, you know, I don't, I can't, you know, people are telling me, oh, go in there and, you know, kick them out. And, you know, do it old school style probably is probably what the low key messages. And he's like, I don't know if these people have firearms. I don't know, you know, how violent they are. Like, I, I can't, I can't, I can't go to my home, my $1.1 million home and get these people the hell out of there. And they torch the place. And, you know, now the, the, the squatters will probably get the insurance claim money, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, how about that for a kicker, you know, could you even yeah. be surprised? If that yeah, happened, it, it, this is this is third world stuff. I, I mean, I yeah. I can tell you, you know, I, I was in Baghdad two thousand nine, right? So mm -hmm. six years after the initial invasion, right? And and truthfully, as the United States invaded, and then in the days following, there was a lot of people, a lot of wealthy people that fled fled Baghdad because they had the means to do so, right? Right. Um, and then of course there are a lot of people who were displaced because of the war for a lot of reasons. Well, sure. all those rich people that left, they left these big, beautiful houses, mm. right? A lot of stone, a lot of marble, a lot of mirrored windows, air conditioning, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. and you know what happened? Squatters. Of course. Happened. Right. All over the place. And mm -hmm. truly, in the time frame that I was there, people started to come back. There were a lot oh, of these okay. wealthy people that were starting to come back because things were fairly stable. We had reached mm -hmm. a new security agreement with the Iraqis. We were turning it back over to them. The Americans were starting to pack their stuff up and, and downsize and, and go home. So there were a lot of indicators to these people that it was okay to start coming back to Iraq. Well, they came right. home and their houses are occupied. They've been gone for five, four, five, six years. Their houses are occupied by these people, right? Mm -hmm. And and they would, they would come to the Iraqi police and say, hey, I got so, you know, Iraqi police look at them and go, what do you want me to do? Which is what wow. our police are doing right now because it, yes. they're powerless. Right. Because the, the, the legal loopholes that are established to let these people retain these residences. It's insanity mm -hmm. that commonsensically, like you said, that people mm -hmm. don't look at this and go, we got to fix this. Yeah. Yeah. Who in their right mind sits there and says, oh, okay, so you've been paying your mortgage. This is your home. You're on the the deed, the lease, whatever the case is. Your furniture, your everything, your family photos <laughs> on the walls. Yep. But these people came in while you were on vacation, so now it's theirs. Like who? What kind of piece of garbage sat there and wrote that out? And it's not just one one state or one city. Like you said, this is across the country. That this is something that people thought was okay. And, you know, I mentioned something about old school justice, old school rules. I, I gotta tell you. So there, there's I a guy, think. there's a guy who does, and I think he, I think it's California. I'm pretty sure it's California. So he's a guy who does home renovation work. Mm -hmm. So he has found a, a method, a technique basically that they're, that he's now being paid to do where he shows up knocks mm -hmm. on the door he's like hey i've been hired to do renovation work here everybody's got to leave because i'm about we're going respirators we're tearing stuff out like this place is about to end and it's a bunch of construction guys right yeah so they roll in there and they roll in there like they own the place and now you've got all these squatters are like ah oh, and and they start knocking out drywall and they start and they just start working and it forces the squatters out and as soon mm -hmm. as they're out they lock the door and they call the owner and go it's clear where you're gonna have wow. to pay me you know and, but so they do that. And so that guy's been, it, I think that's, it, it sounds like when you read it, that's kind of what they're doing is they're just forcing mm -hmm. them out. Um, because as soon as the, the key is to get them to physically leave the house. Yeah. Right. That's the, that's the catch obviously. And they obviously know this. So I'm assuming what they do is they always have someone in the house. So right. if somebody has to go to the store 
or well, they're certainly not going to work. Um, but if they have to go and do whatever it is that they do, they always have somebody staying in the house. That's that's their that's their in, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this guy figured out a way to, to shoo him out of there. And it sounds like he's essentially putting <laughs> putting their health at risk, at least for a short period of time to get them out yeah. of there, which, you know, good on them. Yes. Um, but whatever whatever works. Because again, nobody's getting help from the police on this. And I'm not and I'm not blaming the police. This is no, another of one of those situations where they're put in a really right. bad situation because the legal statute, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, that it, it's been, you know, established that they have a right to be there. And what are the cops supposed to do? Like you said, right. you know, it, the, the old school violence thing. And that's where it gets tricky because, listen, I'm that guy. I I, I, I have no, no mm -hmm. qualms about this. There would be a discussion. There would be a much louder discussion. There would be a threat. And then there would be violence. And, and I'm mm -hmm. sorry, but that's my house. It's my possession. I've worked for it. I've invested in it. It's mine. And you can you can get you can go out on your feet or you can go out on a stretcher. Take mm -hmm. your pick. I don't care. You take your pick, buddy. Whichever right. one you want is fine, right? But, yeah. But then the, then the problem becomes, truthfully, I've now put myself at legal risk. Right. I, it, it, you know, I, in a lot of states, you know, maybe you've got castle doctrine, right? Mm -hmm. Where you can protect, you know, it's, you can protect your castle. A okay. man can protect his castle. So mm -hmm. you've got that. But you've now walked in on them in a state where they may have legal right to be there, mm -hmm. your castle or not. So now it's all very much up in the air, but as much as the old school inclination to physically remove them mm -hmm. is the right answer in a lot of cases, you're also probably going to end up in jail. Right, right. As sad as that sounds, unless you've got like an old school sheriff who's like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you Look need to be in like, me, I, I don't know, you know. Yeah, yeah, you need to be in Florida for that to happen. Maybe Texas, I'm not sure, but yeah, you need to be in some of those, some of those states in order to get your rights back there. So, so like the gist of it is you can't, as the homeowner, you can't physically get them out of your home as we all would like to do in the ways that you described. <laughs> um, you can trick them out. Basically, you can trick them into leaving if you, if you can figure out a way to do that, which I'm sure they're, they're pretty savvy themselves. So, um, you know, it would take something like you said there. So that's, uh, Ooh, I, I guess I'm not that big of a person, Clay. I'm just not, I'm just, I'm just not, I, I, I pray to God. We never have to find out what that, I would do in that situation because yeah, the, I can yeah. just talking about it. I feel my blood pressure going up. Like just the very <laughs> idea of it, like it's getting me fighting mad. <laughs> yeah. it, oh. you, know, you know why? Cause you worked your ass off the, you and your husband to, yeah. to buy that house, to be in that house, you know, mm -hmm. like that's, you know, I don't, we didn't, you and I don't do the free thing, right? Like that's right. not how this works. We, we no. earned everything that we've been given. And for somebody to just walk in and be like, that's mine now. Like, yeah, <laughs> we're going to have, I'm throwing hands. Like this is not, mm -hmm. it's not going to turn out well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I always think of when I have any kind of conversation along these lines, I always remember, and I don't know if you'll remember this show or listeners or watchers, if you guys remember the show, but back in like the eighties, there was a show Whatever you guys will remember family ties, uh, Michael J. Fox, you know, all the other actors, Justine Bateman, blah, blah, blah. Um, and there was a scene, and I don't know why this, uh, well, I guess I do know why. There was one scene in one episode that has stuck with me all these years. We're going back like 30 plus years. And it's a scene, bear with me guys, where Michael J. Fox takes his little brother to like kindergarten. And all the kids are, uh, the, the teacher has them put on like these little signs around their neck that says like, I like to share, I'm a good friend and all of these, you know, cute little sayings. And if you remember Michael J. Fox's character, Alex P. Keaton was a conservative and, <laughs> <laughs> and he sees all these signs and he's like, what the heck is this nonsense? And he puts a sign around his little brother's neck that, that says, I know what's mine. <laughs> and that has been my life motto, I swear to you. I have said that so many times over the years and, and in just that, that way that I know what's mine. And if you want it, you're gonna have to come and get it and it's not gonna be fun for you. <laughs> so yeah, I always think of that. And this reminded me of that, that if something like that happened, um, yeah, it would be like, I'd be taking my earrings off and putting my hair up in that ponytail, <laughs> flicking off my fake nails. <laughs> Listen, oh. you, you and I, 
you and I, as much as we say this, this is about protecting who you are and your your personal. We're we're not about we're not above or we're not saying not to try and take care of other human beings. That's not what this is about, right? Valid point. I know yes. you. I know me. I mean, you know, you're you super Christian lady. I know that you you put in your time and you know donate and I and and all, donate time and donate money. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all part of, you know, your, your time in the church and all that. And, and that's not what this is about. This is about yeah. people doing the wrong, the wrong thing, the wrong way. Right. Um, and, and getting rewarded. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, absolutely. That's not how America works. Sorry. No, no, nope, absolutely not. And uh, FYI, as part of that, uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed into law Wednesday, the property rights bill, which aims to help homeowners remove squatters more quickly. So got a lot yay, Florida. It. Yay, Florida. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta and, love it. And on the flip side, you've got California, right? California. Oh my uh, goodness. Listen, Y'all can't stay is, out of the news, can you? Jeez. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm convinced now that San Francisco is the future, if not current headquarters for, you know, uh, the U.S. Communist Party. I, I just, it, it's everything that happens there continues mm-hmm. to go that direction. So, um, yeah. I caught this this morning and and kind of alerted uh, Elsa to this, and she yes. she she shook her head when she read it. But so the city council, right? We'll keep this basic terms, right? City council, yeah. San Francisco. One of the members is floating a bill um, that grocery stores, because what they're trying to avoid, and it's already happening, mm-hmm. is they're trying to avoid these food deserts, right? In these really really bad, not even really bad neighborhoods, just most of the city, right? So right. If, you, if everybody's not tracking, CVS, Walgreens, all the pharmacy companies are closing down and are pulling out of San Francisco because of the high crime rate, right? right? Grocery stores are starting to do the same thing. Whole Foods had a store that was open for less than a year, mm-hmm. literally came in, set up an entire grocery store in less than a year, shut it down and back back out, right? Yeah. And, and fast food places are now starting to go out of business. Oh, by the way, that $20 an hour minimum wage isn't helping things. So- <sighs> Right. All of this is going on. So Mm -hmm. this bill that's being floated by a member of the city council is actually a resurrected bill or resurrected version of a bill from Mm -hmm. 1984. Right. Right. That's right. And that got shot down. Yep. Yeah. Right. But do you know who the mayor was? No. Dianne Feinstein. Oh, okay. She she vetoed it. Okay. Okay. So this is a resurrected version of that bill, which says any grocery store that is going to shut down close in San Francisco has to one, uh, make it public knowledge uh, with, you know, six months and give everybody notice at least six months notice that they're shutting down. Um, They also have a responsibility to um, help replace their own business with another group. They have to. So if you're the grocery store owner and you're shutting down the grocery store, you have to put forth an effort while you're trying not to go broke yeah, um, to, find a to replace yours to convince some other business owner to take on the mess that you mm-hmm. are leaving. Right. Right. You have an obligation. Right. And if you don't do those two things, and there's some stipulations in there, like if you're um, if you're closing because you're uh, there's a I think there's a certain profit level. Like if you're if you're losing money or you lose money after so many months or so many years, you don't have to follow all these stipulations. But but it, at the base of it is you have to give notice and you have to try and convince somebody else to replace you. And if you don't do those two things, you can be sued by anybody in the area. Like, I, I, <laughs> you know, who in the world, even if you could, now that this bill is in place, like say right. I, I'm going out of business, right? I'm a grocery mm-hmm. store owner. And I say, hey, Elsa, you're, you know, you own a chain of 17 grocery stores. How about you put one where I'm at right now? Right. Whether and I'm going to say, well, how come you're leaving? What's going well, on, friend? That's the first thing that you're going to say. And then the second right? thing you're going to say is, well, if I take over for you and then crime affects me and I'm closing for the same reason you're closing. Now I've got to convince some other idiot to backfill mm-hmm. me when I couldn't even backfill you. Nobody's going to take that on. No, Nobody. no. No. Yeah. So now now they've created the next new problem, which is that you're not going to get any of these major uh, companies, corporations to put their stores in there. So so good luck now, which leads me to a thought and a question of is that also 
a deliberate move. Now you said this whole, you know, socialist party movement. Well, we can't get any stores to come in. So we'll take care of you exactly in our right. special store. Yeah. Exactly and there you have it. And there's the ultimate plan. Wow. Which you saw already. And I just finally caught on to, by the way, <laughs> I just, I just caught on now. You guys all just saw it happen semi live where I caught on. Wow. Wow. I I'm a little bit speechless right now, Clay, but that is so, and I've used this term before brilliantly diabolical. Yeah. Wow. This is, this is, it's about dependency. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that's what this, that's what this bill does very sneakily, right? It sounds mm -hmm. like it's on behalf of the residents of San Francisco. It sounds like it's on trying to protect them from these food deserts. It sounds right. like it's, it's all trying to take care of them. When in reality, what it is about is breeding and continuing to grow dependency, dependency mm -hmm. of the government. Because yeah. that is who is going to replace these grocery stores. Right. They are going to be state or city owned grocery store. Why? Oh. Because they can lose money. The mm -hmm. state loses. Oh, by the way, Governor Newsom's in a little bit of a pickle right now himself because he went from like a, a hundred million dollar um, surplus or something like I think it was a hundred and something million dollar surplus three years ago to now the state's in a deficit in their budget in three years. What? Um, mm. Yeah. So, but but with the state owned stores, they can lose money and write it off. Right. Right. They right. can lose right. money and it's and it's no big deal. That yeah. store can stay open. People can steal from it all day long. All of those yeah. things, and it's not going to matter because the rest of the state of California is going to pay for it. Yep. So they can do that, right? Whoever mm -hmm. it is, and I, you know, I'm, you could throw out whatever chains you want, Kroger and Piggly Wiggly, and sure. I don't even know who's out in San Francisco, <laughs> but um they they're gonna close down and they're gonna leave. Yeah. And oh, there's no question gonna, about it, and they're not yeah. coming back. No, and, and nobody's gonna, gonna come see, in. You're gonna see the establishment of state or city owned grocery stores and pharmacies. Mm -hmm. That's what you're gonna see. And here it is, like I said, the headquarters of the Communist Party United States. Yeah. That's what's yeah. happening right there. Yeah, right absolutely. There. And these are, you know, a reminder, these are the same people that are are pushing for the um banning of gas vehicles by 2035 or something. Yep. You know, so they are they are leading the way. They're leading the way down the path of destruction for sure. And um, woe, woe is anyone who stays there. If you can afford to get out of there, man, oh man, you better do it. Cause um, pack it up, pack it pack up, and it go up. home. Yes, go wherever. Go I don't care. Get out of that place. It's the best anywhere thing you can do. but there. And I'll tell you what. I, and I genuinely, sincerely, even though I, I get so angry that people are oblivious and they choose to be oblivious and ignore all of the things that are happening. That makes me angry, but at the same time, the compassionate side of me feels sad and worried for them because the rest of us who have our eyes open, who are paying attention, we're going to be prepared. You know what I mean? We're, we're going to be fine, better than fine, actually. And they're really going to have a, an incredibly hard time down the road if we keep going on this trajectory, if things keep going this way. So, yep. oh, man, oh, man. All right, let's go. Let's go a little okay. bit global. Let's go. We've been all domestic. Let's do it. We've let's been do all it. domestic this entire <clears throat> this entire episode. Let's do let's a little bit of global. A little, little bit of global politics. Yeah. For those of you that didn't see this, um, Doctor Phil, who truthfully I'm not a not a fan of. Um, Same. He's got that. What do they call? It? He's got an ick factor for me. I don't know exactly what that means, but it's like he's got a big ick factor. Dr. No, Phil, you you nailed it. Yeah. There's an ick feeling there. Anyway. So he he had on um, son of one of the co-founders of Hamas on his show, mm -hmm. right? Um, Yusuf is his last name. Yeah, uh, Mossab. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yusuf, his dad was Sheikh Yusuf, um, one of the two co-founders of Hamas. Now this mm -hmm. this guy who is in and about my age, give or take a little bit, um, our age. He in 1990s. Now he grew up around all of these activists, right? right. All of these wannabe and, and fledgling terrorists. He grew up surrounded by this. Mm -hmm. And in 1997, he walked away, walked away, walked out of, you know, whatever occupied territory he was in at the time. And he went to the Israelis and he said, hey, <laughs> let me tell you what's going on over there. And oh, by the way, 
I'm here to work for you guys. And he played double agent for years, years, sat there, mm -hmm. was inside of Hamas, reported back to the Israelis. He kept them apprised of what was going on. And he got on the Dr. Phil show and Dr. Phil <laughs> invited some Palestinian supporting Americans, some students, yep. some college students, ate them alive. Ate yeah. them alive. It was incredible to watch. Yes, we'll we'll throw in a clip here for you guys. Um, yeah, he it was a it was a no mercy, and they were um, I, I think they were like deer in headlight. They they couldn't even they could barely even respond. Right? It was yeah. yeah. And this guy this guy is coming from you know these are these are some pampered college students. Yeah. You know, coddled, pampered. USA college, uh, college students, and here's a guy who who lived it. His father <laughs> was, you know, co-founder of Hamas. I mean, and he's telling him, and what did he call him? He called them useful idiots. Useful. Yeah, he did not, you know, he he didn't hold back. And uh, yeah, his story alone. So let's go back for a second. Now, his story alone is so wild and so yeah. incredible. And I would, if there is a book out about that, I need to read it because that is the stuff movies are made out of, right? I mean, if there isn't even a movie about his life, I, I don't even know why there wouldn't be one because that's movie worthy, epic worthy. Yeah, I, uh -oh. I've never heard of. I'm not saying it hasn't happened, but mm -hmm. I've never heard of active espionage against a terrorist organization like to that extent yeah. like that there is no i have a hard time believing even with all the educated people that study this for a living that have been living mm -hmm. no one has personal firsthand experience and can speak with such authority more so than this guy yeah like right he he looked at those kids and he said you have no idea what you're supporting Mm -hmm. And then he laid it out for him. Let me tell you what you're supporting. This is what this is. There is no solution. There is no, all they want is the destruction of Israel. There is no right. in between. And he laid it all out for him. And they were essentially speechless. They tried to tell him that he was um, repeating colonial rhetoric. <laughs> and, and, he, and at that point, he's like, that's where I think, if I remember right, I think that's where the useful idiots statement yes. came from. Yes. You know, he's like, listen. <laughs> yeah, you can espouse whatever you want. You have no mm -hmm. clue what you're talking about. You know. Yeah. And can you imagine? Yeah. Being that, I mean, honestly, like you said, can you imagine being that much of an idiot to actually think that you can come up with a a sound, intelligent argument over somebody who has, like you said, lived firsthand, has active historical, personal historical knowledge and experience in this, and you're just some dumb kid you know who probably hasn't even left the country once ever you know well it's that it's that level of arrogance right yeah, it, it, it is you know oh well i i i read about this i study this i watch the news you know it's mm -hmm. that i know what's going on over there i know i know that this person's lying and trump is this and biden's this and you know netanyahu and this and blah blah blah, blah. and they don't know jack because it's all third hand every right. bit of it's third hand and that guy right is living it lived it for mm -hmm. years stood right in the middle of it like you said and but it's that arrogance it's that level of arrogance from those kids which is baffling to me that they would have it the really guts is. to say that to his face mm -hmm. oh you're just doing this oh you're just saying that no that's not how this works i i applaud the guy for getting on there i yeah he's one of those people and you know this right because we, mm -hmm. we've talked about the most dangerous job in the world that guy right there is living a life where he is looking over both shoulders 15 times between his front door and his car in the driveway. Yeah, because there's there's I'm, no no yeah. question about it. I mean, that that he's made it this long is um is amazing, yeah. really. He's, it really he's is. He's not even a mafia snitch. Like that right. guy, like you right. know a, a mafia snitch like eventually they're going to get you, you know, you kind of right. know it's coming and you you do what you can. Like that guy if they get a hold of him, they're literally going to tear him apart. Like and yes. he knows it. that is Yeah, and they're going to horrible these, life to live. It's not going to be quick and it's no. not going to be pretty. They will no. make it really really bad and obviously nobody knows that better than him. So, yep. yeah, that he gets correct. a tremendous uh credit and um gratitude for for doing what he's doing because it's at his own expense it, it really yeah. is in every possible way 
and uh, you know, it doesn't benefit him. None of this benefits him in any way, you know. So, but but you know what? W have you ever seen him before? Have you I, never ever have. Right. I never have. I never have. You've never seen him. You've never seen him on CNN. You've right. never seen him on MSNBC. Most mm -hmm. of the mainstream. I'm surprised Dr. Phil had him on, but I think Dr. Mm -hmm. Phil is kind of the new Oprah, and he's got a little swag, so he can he can get people like that. But you're mm -hmm. never going to see that guy on ABC Nightly News, right? right? You're not going to get that, you know, um, that, you know, 60 minutes interview. He's not doing that. Why? Right. Because he's not the message. That is not the message that they want all over the television right now. He's, right. You know where right. he should be? He should be sitting in the Secretary of State's office. Mm. That's where, as a, as a, let me tell you what's going on over there. Oh, by the way, yes. relay this to your idiot president who doesn't mm -hmm. know what's going on either. Like right. that's the guy that they need to be talking to. Yeah. Well, if a couple of things happen, one, he manages to stay alive and two, Trump gets an office. I'm sure that's where he'll be next. Yeah. God there's, really. there's definitely some employment opportunities for that guy. Oh yeah. That's yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Any smart CIA director is like, Hey, <laughs> come mm -hmm. here. Come here. Got an office <laughs> for you down the hall. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh man, I'm so excited when we, you know, when we have more than our normal number of topics that we're able to get through them all. I always get a little bit nervous, like, oh my gosh, what if we have to cut something? Because they're all so <laughs> so great. But uh, I'm I'm excited to say we did it. Na -na 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 -na. Yep. <laughs> I don't know, like not that anybody was hoping we wouldn't. <laughs> I don't know why I got childish about it, no, but uh, but anyhow. You guys all know what I'm going to say by now. You know I'm going to ask you to, to join us in the comment section. Talk to us. Let us know what you think about the topics. Uh, give us your opinions. You guys have been amazing in the comment section, and, and we're so grateful. Um, so we thank you for joining us and for engaging in the conversation. And um, we just, boy, oh, boy, we just enjoy it so much, don't we, Clay? Yeah, I, I swear my my Thursday nights when this when the video drops, it looks like a national command center. Like I got multiple TVs and my laptop and my phone all going and I'm watching the it's on like three or four different platforms at this time, <laughs> trying to keep up with it all. It's pretty awesome, though, to, to get all that feedback and interaction with everybody that's listening and watching. So we, we super appreciate it. Um, I know we both love it. So we please keep keep tuning in, keep listening. And again, you can find us both on the socials. So please do. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Clay. Give him the closing. My favorite closeout. As always for me, keep moving, keep shooting. I love it. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.